What is going on, everybody? My name is Billy. This is Backline Films. And if you're new here, welcome. I appreciate you stopping by today. Now, this is a very different look than what you guys are used to. I am sitting at my desk today because I actually want to kind of show the product I'm talking about today. And I want to go over a couple of quick things real quick. First off, I apologize to anybody that has kind of been expecting an upload. I have been sick and then I also had a wedding and a whole bunch of other things go on that I'm kind of recovering from at the moment. So I am working on that and we're back. So I appreciate you if you stuck around and you haven't completely left the channel. Thank you very much. Today, we are going to be talking about something kind of cool, kind of not flashy, uh, similar to the lights as last week. But today we are going to talk about the Atmos Shinobi. Now I got this for the same reason that pretty much everybody else gets one. I needed something that I could see much better, especially in brightly lit areas like outside. And I wanted something that would provide a much better screen for me to be able to make sure everything's in focus like I needed to be, as well as making sure exposure is correct. So with the little screens that you get on your camera, it's really, really hard to see sometimes, especially when you have the different things bouncing around the screen, like the little boxes that are covering you up for your focus or anything like that. So I needed something that was gonna be a clean image of what I'm looking at and make sure that I have some tools associated with it that would help me record. Now I was on a hunt for something that wasn't gonna be super expensive and something that was gonna work out well for me and as well as any second shooters or anything like that that I have and also be able to look professional. I want something that's gonna look awesome Anytime you see, and I know it's kind of weird to talk about, but anytime you see people out filming, they've got these giant monitors on their, their camera rigs and it looks really cool. And it just makes it look like you actually know what you're doing, which we know sometimes you don't. So what I want to do is kind of go over some of the specs on this. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of kind of what it looks like. And we do have some drawbacks to at least the two Shinobis that I received myself. So first and foremost, this is a 4K input, but a 1080p screen. So if you have a 4K input that you need to put up, I believe it's up to 60 frames. I could be wrong. I'll put it on the screen here. 4K 60, but you got a nice clean 1080 output, which is absolutely plenty to just look at. One of the other things that is really cool about this is you can actually have 10-bit footage feeding to it. So that way you don't have to worry about, well, I'm recording in 10-bit internally to my camera, but this screen could only accept 8-bit or something like that. You don't have to worry about that. Really, really cool. Um, again, one of the things I talked about, it's super bright. I can see it pretty much in any type of sunlight unless I'm literally next to the sun, which it would be impossible. You could see the screen. I think it's perfectly fine. I want to say it's around 1,000 nits. Could be wrong, but again, on the screen. Uh, another feature that I love about this is you can actually load LUT. So I'll show you real quick. You can see on the side here, my HDMI cord is covering, but I believe that's in focus. You can actually put an SD card in here and you can load your, your specific LUTs and looks that you want on there. So even if you're using a camera like the Lumix S5 Mark II where you're already baking it in, or you don't wanna bake it in, but you know in post, hey, I wanna be able to see this, most of the cameras have that ability to be able to see what it would look like with the LUT on it. Most of the Lumix setup is like a live view monitor LUT, something to that effect. So with this, you're able to also do something like that as well. You're able to throw that LUT on there and know instantly pretty much what your footage is gonna look like the moment you go to grade it and edit it and do whatever you're gonna do with it. Another cool feature, which I'm gonna show you guys in just a moment, we'll go over some of the things on here. Now, I don't use all of these because like I'm sure some of you are out there, I'm still a beginner. I'm trying to learn exactly what all of these things are. But one thing that is cool that's on here is something called false color. And as far as I can tell from anything I've ever seen out there, and I'm sure maybe you have as well. And if you know more, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Educate me just as I'm trying to educate you here. The false color really, really helps with exposure. It's another exposure tool. Now my cameras have waveforms and vector scopes already built into the camera that I can utilize as well as spot metering to know where I'm at. But having false color apparently makes it to where you can actually expose even more correctly. I don't know how to use it very well. I will show you guys kind of what it looks like and hopefully we can get an idea of what it really does. But it is something if you are looking to make sure that you 100% want to get everything perfect in camera before you get to your editing, 
it has false color there for you. Another feature about it that I personally like, it is fairly lightweight. It doesn't weigh a lot. Now, once you have a battery attached to it, which I used to run the bigger batteries that actually come with this, uh, but I've got these thinner NPF style batteries for it. It is fairly lightweight. It doesn't add that much more weight to your camera, but for me, it adds just enough weight to your camera. So that way it helps with kind of weighing your camera down, especially if for some reason you didn't buy Lumix and you don't have good stabilization then your camera will have adequate weight to be able to help, especially with your handheld footage. There is also on the side here, you can see there's an HDMI port that you would plug into. And then there is also, sorry, let me get that focus. There's also an audio port here on the side. So if you have audio feeding via HDMI to the monitor, you're gonna be able to listen to your audio. On this other side, again, you have that SD card slot as well as a remote port. I assume, uh, I really, I never looked into it. I have no idea what this remote port does. We'll get to that in just a moment because typically for a remote port, there would be one function for it. And uh, we're gonna talk about that. So again, there is a single battery slot on here. So I have seen some monitors, especially probably something like the seven inches that are much larger that have two battery slots. And then you're adding more weight. And this just has the easy single battery slot here. You just press a button and you can eject the battery. And then if not, it clicks right into place. If I can line this up. So that way, no matter what orientation you have this, whichever way it is, you don't have to worry about that battery falling out. Another thing is it does support some sort of HDR. So if you are shooting in any type of HDR footage or you wanna see what it's gonna look like as far as that, you can utilize that function as well. And then the main reason I got this is because I was on the hunt again for a monitor that was gonna be not too crazy expensive and usable for what I needed it for, which was just really to be able to actually see what is going on from my camera. Now, one of the reasons I looked at this monitor is because it was made by Atmos. So for me, that is one of the biggest brands that I see almost everybody using. Most of them are using like a Ninja 5 or something like that that you can utilize. And I know those range from five to 700. I think even the newest one is up to $800 uh, just for the five inch version. And I was not looking to spend that much. Uh, it was something I was, it was new to me. I didn't know if I would even like it, you know, cause I am used to the screens that are on here. While it is harder to see, I've gotten used to it and it's fine for me sometimes. Sometimes I do need a little more, but I needed something that was gonna be more affordable for me. And that's where the Shinobi comes into play. So the Shinobi is actually only $299 and I got it off of Amazon. Um, and for the most part, this has been a pretty good monitor for me. Again, it does pretty much everything I need it to do, as well as some other features added on. We're gonna look at it in just a moment. Um, but I do wanna go over some cons before we get into that. One of the cons that this monitor has, so I do have the two here. So you can see here, this monitor looks fine. It's got everything on there. It's got the screen, everything's good to go. But if you look at this one and you look closely, you can kind of see some glue around the edges. And what that is, is on both of these, the moment I open the box, the screens, as soon as you had it on the camera for more than about 10, 15 minutes, the screens would literally just pop off. And all the electronics that are attached to it, that send it the actual signal, were luckily still intact, but it would just constantly pop off. So for the longest time, I had gaff tape around all of these edges and everything, just holding that screen in place. Uh, which for me, one of the, you know, again, one of the, the, the pros to this is it looks like it's very professional, right? So you're, you're on set, it looks professional. You have this bigger screen. If you're shooting for a client, somebody else that's there can obviously shoulder surf you and see exactly what's going on on this much bigger screen. But if the screen's popping off, to me, that looks incredibly unprofessional. It looks like you're using very cheap gear. Now, while these are affordable in the Atmos line, 300 bucks is still a lot of money. I mean, for some people that could be a new lens or that could be other things that you could do with that. DaVinci Resolve is $300, right? For a full-fledged editing pro suite. But yet the screens were popping off and it was incredibly embarrassing. Now, somehow on this one, I think having that tape on there so long helped kind of reseat this and get whatever glue they used to, to put put on there it, it worked so it eventually sat down and it, it's been fine i've tested it i've you know shook it up and down whatever the case may be but this one never really quite sat so um i got very impatient and decided not to even look up any videos on anybody because i couldn't really find anything online of anybody having these similar issues 
I got really impatient and I decided I had some Gorilla Glue laying around and I put obviously entirely too much on there to where even as it dried, more kind of seeped up through the top of that. Incredibly frustrating, but it is one of the biggest drawbacks to this that I've ever experienced. Now, I don't know if it's because I ordered it from Amazon or whatever the case may be. Obviously, things like this can happen, but I got two and both of them had the same exact issue. So if anybody else has experienced this, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you had any fixes for it. Obviously, I'm kind of SOL unless the, the good one starts to fall off as well. It is something that was frustrating. I kind of looked it up. I did a quick search. Didn't really find anything on anybody having this issue. And it is something I do want to point out. So if you're worried about that, maybe don't order from Amazon. Maybe it's something, you know, these are probably mass produced mass available so they've probably been sitting in a warehouse for who knows how long there's no like copyright date or anything on it so i don't know exactly when this was manufactured obviously that is an issue screen falling off is not good it looks terrible it looks very unprofessional and it's obviously nearly impossible to use if your screen is just popping off another issue i have with this is that there is no hdmi out now i should look at the ninjas and see if they have it for that extra money but for me i kind of want a pass through with this one of the things that i would like to utilize this for is monitoring when i'm doing this and i don't want to look up top of the camera and i don't want to look with this kind of just hanging out somewhere but i also sometimes do live streams so i have uh, an atem mini pro that i run the camera to and then what would be really cool rather than checking like obs or something actually use the functions on this monitor and be able to utilize it a little more and have a second feed come into this with the camera or if i want to go to some kind of wireless adapter or anything like that so somebody else could see it there's no way to do that this way now obviously with the atem mini pro if you're familiar with that there is an hdmi out i could run the clean feed from the camera through that i don't want to do that i want to have an hdmi in and hdmi out so i could run it somewhere else and be able to have other people see exactly what i'm seeing so it is kind of frustrating. Obviously there are ways around it, but I would like there to be an HDMI out, but with its form factor, its size, the fact that you've got an SD card slot on one side, an HDMI in on the other side, plus the headphone out, I'm sure there's really actually no way to have an HDMI out, possibly. I don't know, if the screen has fallen off, then you obviously uh, have something else pushing on the screen or something going on. So maybe it's possible you can squeeze in an HDMI out, who knows? One other thing I wrote down and I'm, uh, I'm struggling to kind of remember what this issue was. Oh, I do remember actually. Sometimes this touchscreen acts weird. It is a fairly responsive touchscreen. So actually let's go ahead and turn this guy on so we can talk about it a little more. And hopefully this looks good. I've never done a top down view before, but this is coming on. We should be getting a feed here soon. And uh, there's my beautiful face and damn, this looks crispy. I hope it comes out like this. So. Sometimes when you're touching on the touchscreen, it seems like it's fairly responsive, but it's to me, it's not very user friendly. And sometimes when I touch something or have something, I can't turn it off or on. Of course, you know, this is going to make a liar out of me, just like everything else that I use and work. So sometimes it's weird. Sometimes there's there's been a box for like waveforms, like right in this area. And I, I remember Actually, I think when I did the video on the lights last time for you guys that I couldn't figure out how to get that thing off. I couldn't move it. I couldn't move it around the screen like I would be able to on my camera. And uh, that was kind of an issue for me. Another thing about this screen is there is no recording. So just understand that uh, this is where I believe the absolute minimal cost comes into play with the Shinobi versus the Atmos. There is no on screen recording for this. So if you want to try to record, you know, ProRes or uh, obviously this isn't a black magic device, but if you're trying to do black magic raw or anything like that, you're not going to be able to record to this screen. It is simply only for viewing and using the tools that come on the screen. Well, last but not least, something I want to talk about. As far as I know, there's no like delay compensation on this. Now, the issue I have is with Lumix themselves, and I believe it's specifically the S5. If you are running video from the S5, I'm sorry, the S5 II rather. If you're running video from the S5 II over to a monitor, there is a slight delay. So you guys could probably see here and we can look at it in post. 
as my hand's going up and down, there is a, a slight, like, I don't know, half a second delay or something. This can be worse. And the way it's worse is if you run an audio to this as well. So even though there is that handy dandy headphone out, I can't run audio. This may be different in your case if you use maybe a Sony or a Canon or something else. There is obviously possibility that it's just my camera brand. So that could be frustrating, but that's something I do want to bring up that, that there is an issue there. So we are going to take a look here. So real quick, and my apologies, again, I've never done this and I've got this giant HDMI cable running down here. So real quick, there is some different options here for waveforms. You could turn on your different waveform. And I guess this is where you would tell it where you want it. Bottom left right here. And I, I'm assuming this would be over the screen. Let's take a look here. Yeah, see, so it's still bottom left there. Let's go back. And this is where I get a little confused because I'm not sure exactly how to do this. So there's another waveform there. You've got a giant one. Okay, so that would be on the screen there. So, right. So you could choose what you want here. And hopefully you guys are able to see that. Hopefully this is in focus for you. You've also got focus peaking here. You've got your zebras. Again, you have your different LUTs that you can turn on. Your monitor, which would turn on either whether it's native or if you turn on a LUT. So I'll do that here. I don't even remember what LUT I have on here, but obviously that is a wildly looking different image. I'm extremely orange, so we're going to turn that off and turn it back to native. Native, obviously, meaning what's coming out of the camera. There is also a built-in Rec. 709 and HLG um, and whatever PQ is. I have never used that, so I have no idea. So my apologies. If you know what it is, again, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. And then you have a backlight you can lift and gamma and gain on here as well. I just keep those standard anytime I use this. You also have your parade, your RGB parade that you can put up there. Now here, I'm not seeing a whole lot of colors. So this is tough. Maybe, I don't know if you guys can see that, uh, but it's kind of tough to see any colors there. This is slightly different, obviously showing different exposure levels as well. I couldn't even tell you what this button does. Oh. That's vector scope. My apologies. It's showing in the bottom left there. So again, if your camera doesn't have these like the Lumix does, your different waveforms and vector scopes, uh, mine doesn't have the RGB parade, then obviously you could utilize these, these different functions on here. So turn off the vector scope. This looks like some other sort of vector scope. Maybe this one, sh sh this one looks like it should be so showing some sort of saturation, your different skin tones. And I'm not sure what that one does. Uh, again, another, um, I cannot remember what this is called. And if you remember and you're at this time, please leave it down in the comments because I can't remember what this is called, but it's another exposure tool here. And then this is an RGB version. And then this looks like you can kind of separate it, which is actually really cool. I haven't even seen this function before. You separate it so you have your waveform there kind of out of the way and your full screen look there on the screen. We'll go ahead and take that off. And then this is for focus. So you have, you can see like the mic is kind of in focus there. I'm obviously in focus, but the, the mic according to that, some zebra tools, and then your false color. So my best guess is the, the lighter it is, the wider it is, the more exposed it is, and the darker the image it is there. Now, as far as the different colors, I am not sure. I know there's gotta be a graph somewhere, but it's something I don't typically use, something maybe I should get into, especially if it's kind of easy to just turn on and off, check it real quick, make sure at least skin tones and stuff like that are exposed. So we'll turn that off for now. We'll turn this peaking off for now. There is a little arrow here. So you can kind of scroll it there. And then this is that same thing. So let's get past that. This just turns off color, turns into a black and white image. This zooms in, which is probably a cool feature. So it looks like a two times and a four times zoom. And then you also can do your different framing options on here. So 16 by nine, if you're gonna do a 2.41, 2.35, 1.9, 1.85, a four by three. I'm sure there's gotta be a one-to-one. -one. So for Instagram there, five by four, one by one by nine and off. So there's that. Uh, you can have a frame marker on here. So it will actually just kind of outline and border for your different frame options here. And then this is kind of cool. Something I didn't know that was on here. This obviously, if you are with me, looks like a D-squeeze option. 
if you're shooting anamorphic. So again, if you're not a Lumix user and you don't have those options in camera, then you could do it on this screen as well. So it looks like we got a two times, a 1.5 and a 1.33 X on there. So let's scroll again. Oh, let's not zoom into my terrible looking face here. And maybe that is it. I can't seem to, it makes it seem like there are more options. This is lit up white. I don't know if the, again, if you can see that on the camera here, but it's lit up white. I feel like you should be able to. Other than that, you can turn off all those different little things there. Again, that waveform is still there. It's not something from my camera. I can't figure out how to get rid of it. Uh, the sound metering, I believe, would be from my camera, but I also would think it would be just on here. You have a battery option here, so you can see what kind of battery you're working with. You can check your audio and check the input. It'll tell you what the camera is inputting here. And then again, you could change it to the camera output is either log or HDR, if you want that, what kind of camera you have. And then that's pretty much it. Very simple to use, very easy to use. It was very confusing when turning on and off. It is tap to turn on and it's hold for three seconds to turn off. And you can also lock it if you hold it for four seconds. But I think you have to have this menu up and then you can hold it for three. And then you get a nice little power down. So if you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to leave it in the comments. If I didn't go over it in this video and I don't know it, I promise you I will research it for you and try to figure that out. It's a good monitor. It looks good. It's a nice crystal clear image of what you are recording. And it is extremely helpful when you're in the field and you're trying to make sure that you're getting everything right. One of my next goals is to shoot a short film. And this is something I will obviously use to make sure my framing is correct, anything like that. One goal is to also get my hands on anamorphic uh, lenses and if for some reason my camera which I believe it does have all of those but if I want those de-squeeze options simply on the screen I can use those there to kind of see what it's going to look like so there are quite a few different options things that luckily by doing this video I got to see and really cool stuff that I could take a look at for future reference I mean that's pretty much it I appreciate everybody who stopped by I appreciate again anybody that stuck with me again I am so sorry for two weeks now without a video they will be back. This one is going to come out and kind of make up for this week. So today is a Wednesday. This will probably come out on a Thursday. That'll make up for Monday. Again, confusing. And then there should be another one coming out next week as well. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Please, if you haven't already, and if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already as well, please hit that subscription button. It's free. It's easy. It helps the channel out, helps me grow, and helps me hopefully see that you guys actually either want to enjoy the videos, find them informative, find them educational, and you want to see more. Um, there's a lot of things coming this year that I plan on putting out, including possibly my first ever vlog, which maybe people don't necessarily care about that, but I'm interested to do one because I've never done one. I only film other people. I've never filmed myself as far as walking around or doing different things. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. This video is finally over. Have a great day, evening, whatever it is, and I'll see you next time.